Okay, so let's begin. I will try to do uh, some kind of... This is my first attempt to do like a, a painting companion, so something like that. It and I don't want to do like the straight tutorial. I have different uh, channel for that, but it would be uh, like an hour long thing to help you paint your own stuff. So I, I guess it's more about, uh, it should be more about uh, overall workshop around the painting miniatures than the, than the straightforward uh, techniques. Uh, I will probably show you a few things during that, but I won't be really focusing on anything in particular. So you don't need to really even watch it. Maybe you can listen it uh, while, you, while you're painting your own stuff. Uh, I don't know, it's an experiment. I will show you what I'm working on, uh, how am I doing it. So you will probably find some useful, useful stuff here, but it's more about motivating you to paint your own miniatures than uh, showing you some techniques. Okay, so that's uh, the thing I'm working on right now. I don't know if you will need to see my water. Uh, okay, so I'm painting a small warband for Malifo. Probab that's probably how it's spelled. Uh, I already did the Euripides uh, box. So yeah, that's the main guy. And now I need to paint the rest of the miniatures. Of, um, this is like probably never this is the Neverborn faction. I don't really know how the factions in Malifo works. So uh, I don't know if it's an army or smaller thing or you can uh, put a different kind of uh, models in your own army from different factions, I don't, I don't know. But this is like the main color scheme. So the blue and blue, the teal is the main color and the uh, purple is secondary color. And I need to just paint around that. So I have this guy and with this color scheme in mind I need to paint all the other stuff from this army. So uh, here I have a cyclop and just to, I will be painting his face during this talk. <laughs> um, but I want to show you other stuff. So these are some other miniatures from this uh, this project and I want to make each uh, miniature a little bit different than the others but still keeping those two colors the teal and the purple uh, as the main theme for, for the army so yeah mm. So I have uh, this beautiful cyclop. I really like the. Um, I rarely have occasion, uh, have opportunity to paint uh, Malifo, and I really like the new de new designs for their like third edition. So yeah, yeah I really like uh, the, uh, the style of new miniatures. Uh, 
I really like the whole style of the game, but the re-sculpts and the new boxes are really, really cool and I really like them. Uh, I'm glad that I can paint them as my job because I'm not uh, a big collector, uh, but nevertheless I like to work on uh, good looking miniatures. I don't really like uh, their um, casting technology. They, um, it's not that bad but uh, they use plastic which is a good thing i really like plastic miniatures but they still need to uh, work on their uh, i would say they are uh, the miniatures are split in very strange patterns so um, for example, I know it's bad comparison because it's really hard to compete with a Games Workshop, but in in the Games Workshop miniatures you have uh, the mold lines and the separations between the parts somewhat hide it. Uh, but in Malifo they are sometimes on like in the middle of the face or in the middle of belly or the knee or in very um, visible uh, there the separation between parts when you are gluing the model together they are very visible and you need a lot of green stuff to uh, make them work and I can't really imagine how somebody without uh, experience could do that on, on his own usually when you are a beginner or uh, or even some casual modeler you are just gluing the model together and you're not thinking much about it so yeah that's that, that without a lot of green stuff uh, this whole cool design can be um, somewhat destroyed by uh, mold lines and mold lines mold lines are not that bad but the separations between uh, parts are cut off. Of, um, this is like one of the newest uh, boxes, so I guess uh, it's <clears throat> it's like like that for most of the models. But uh, on the small, smaller models, it's not that visible and it's not that bad so maybe i just got the very large pieces that's why uh, it looks that bad mm, but i don't know there is definitely a, a space for improvement but i know this it's difficult when you don't have big budget uh, to get this technology right Games Workshop spends a lot of money to get their uh, models in plastic so and they have way more know-how and just resources to do that. Anyway, if you decide to spend a few hours just green stuffing them, they, work, they look amazing. So yeah, that's doable but uh, just takes time and some skill okay so I always try to uh, start painting with more the most important pieces and, and in almost every case uh, face is the most important part or the helmet or it's like the first uh, think you look when you're looking at a uh, model it's just how it works um, I have a lot of work done already with an airbrush um, so I will try to not uh, screw that up only enhance the effects I already have done with with an airbrush okay so 
I will use I don't know if I will be talking uh, all the time about uh, the actual uh, miniature I'm painting maybe I will just I don't know I really want to be uh, it this painting companion to be somewhat open style not something I can improvise with and just talk to you mainly because I uh, want to improve my video making and speaking I know I can do better and I I personally really like the YouTube videos for everything so I guess it's good medium to um, talk to you okay so I'm using a somewhat uh, diluted paint to put the shadows in on his teeth and eyeballs. Eyeballs should be as dark as possible without getting it black. And you may hear uh, some sound of fan in the background. Uh, it's because it's really really hot in here and I'm the person who I just can't stand the heat so I need the fan to just work properly I would probably sleep through the day if I had not have some kind of cooling in my working space and I don't have like AC a bit too much black under his chin so I need to this this side of face should be of his face should be um, significantly darker so I just try to put a lot of shadow there by the way painting with camera on in your face is very awkward for me so that's another thing I need to get used to but uh, I hope I'm improving my setup and uh, I did few tutorials already and some of the recordings were just to sometimes I just missing the miniature in the in the view so I'm painting for half an hour like this uh, sometimes I'm putting something important in, in the um, the view so yeah I need to get that right as well okay so I have a little bit of a shadow in his mouth and I guess that's enough so now I can improve the highlights I will start with uh, because I already have some highlights as you can see uh, so I just need to put the really final ones but I will start with painting his table I don't know if I will actually uh, paint his people because the I don't know I like this I like this for the monsters I like the style of uh, eyes when you they don't have uh, pupils and in the most of my models you will see that if uh, my client or customer don't uh, request them i usually don't paint them because it's not like i don't 
I can't paint them, <laughs> uh, but but I just prefer that that version. I don't know why. Mm, okay, so I have the eagle. Now I will paint the teeth and. don't really paint the whole teeth so if they're they are very long uh, I usually try to leave some of this uh, previous color just to uh, keep the contrast it's easier and looks better so yeah and now for the upper upper teeth you can still see him. <laughs> this is awkward as hell for me, but I will manage. I just need to work on my painting habits. I'm so used to the one style of uh, painting, so I have a lot of habits uh, when working. Uh, that's why I'm quite fast when I work, but uh, when I need to show something or uh, work with different style is I really fighting a lot of small habits I have. Okay, so I have the teeth. <laughs> what now? Probably I should paint the uh, his tongue. Tongue. I need to work on my pronunciations too. And this color is too bright. I need to add a little bit black to make it more natural. It would be, it would look silly if I just use this color. Red is really um, tricky to work with when you are painting like the flesh. It's easy to use too bright uh, shade of red and make it look unnatural. I am trying to highlight uh, what this this will be his right side of uh, his tongue. Uh, I try to keep this separation uh, in between, so I'm highlighting two parts: this this one and this one in the middle. Try to not uh, treat his uh, in, in every case, you need to separate even the single uh, piece when you want to have a really nice shadow. And I'm just adding a little bit of white to make the highlight even more visible. And I would probably need somewhat darker shade to highlight the inside of his mouth. I just want to put something in there. I don't want to make it very um, colorful and highlighted because it's the part it is the part that should be somewhat in, left in the dark and maybe I will add just the final I will add just the final highlight on his tongue Jesus Christ I need to finish it up just to not speak it just to not speak it I anyway uh, and at the end and we will add just a little bit of this brighter color to make it more 
give it more life shade. Okay, so it looks decent. Um, I also want to add a little bit of red around his eye. <coughs> like this but I guess uh, nobody likes the sound of his voice but my voice it's really I couldn't walk in the radio I can't complain but if I could I would use I would pay somebody to nar nar narrate my videos, <laughs> really. But I, but I can't, because we are doing it live. So... I need to suffer through this. And just get used to it. Okay. So I have a little bit of red around his eyeball. I'm using very diluted paint to do that and I'm doing it in a few layers. Each layer should be closer and closer to his eye. So you will get so I will get this nice uh, gradient which is isn't very visible but it's there so yeah okay so I have that and he has some spikes on his head and uh, I need to paint them black or any dark color would work but I have black here so I want want to be very creative in that manner I would Really often use black for small pieces just because it's easier and there is not much difference if you do anything else. Okay. So Now I will uh, highlight his skin. This is like my basic skin tone and I'm just adding white. And I will try to paint some highlights just to make his chin more pronounced. That's difficult. Uh, it wouldn't be, but in order to show you how it's done, it will be well, it will be difficult. Okay, so as you can see, I'm painting a lot of small layers, and it should be a habit. If you are not doing that, it should be a habit that you develop because in the tutorials we have like this <sighs> a lot of steps with each uh, big layer one after another um, and it's it, it's easier uh, when you are layering but if you really want to paint fast you need to make all these year layers uh, in like Maybe not in one motion, but it's really hard to paint in like a lot of steps. 
with breaks between them. I mean, it's not hard, but it's uh, time consuming and painting is so time consuming uh, that you need every help to make it easier and faster. better you can get just by dedicating more time to it. I know it's, it sounds obvious, but um, for me, the biggest roadblock to get like to the highest level uh, is just the time necessary to spend on that. So when I'm watching like very, um, very, professional I guess I'm professional painter but you know the golden demon winners and all these artists that are painting these uh, show pieces they are spending so much time on them that I can't just justify painting it's just a mental thing for me because uh, at, so I really like painting miniatures but when you are spending like, I don't know, 20 hours on very small detail, maybe not even on small detail, but uh, on like, for example, the shield on the sword or whatever, uh, it's for me, I just feel like it's wasting your life. <laughs> the miniatures are beautiful and I love, love to uh, look at them, but I decide to leave that type of painting to artists and some competition painters. I really like to have like the gaming uh, pieces and for me the best miniatures are those that you actually use on the table and in the game. That's when I feel like the time you spend on the miniature is justified. When it has to just stay on the shelf, it's not worth it. For me, obviously. It's like every, every painter is different. I have some few nice highlights, so that's probably will be close to enough for me. I really like to paint uh, like small dots, especially with white, to uh, add a little bit of texture the model it's not that visible um, in real life but it will be uh, on the photo so yeah and maybe I will do like a small highlight on the other side usually leave the other side alone because I don't want to screw up the shadows. They are already there, so I don't want to. Uh, this was like a big issue when I was, maybe not starting painting, but somewhat a few years ago. Uh, I was too focused on making things better. So after a few, hours I, I my paint job just went backwards so I started to highlight for example I started to highlight uh, the parts that should be really in the deep shadows and the um, I really 
overworked some some parts of the models to so I spend more time to make them look worse and it's really easy to get there so if you don't have a habit of deciding it's good enough you should start to think about it obviously everyone has his own point when it's good enough for you so it's up to you to decide for me it's just about here okay but in the process of adding red around the eye i make this I will a little bit darker so I would just add small white dot in the middle ah. now now it looks way better I guess <clears throat> okay so I just need to highlight these final horns small horns on his head and his face will be somewhat done obviously I spent a few hours painting just the face but let's be let's be honest it looks good enough and I still have a lot of work to do on the other parts okay so I want this video be like an hour long so I have half and half an hour more um, so maybe I will uh, show you how to highlight these ice crystals I could just paint the skin but uh, if I would just try to paint him I will try to paint as much skin in one sitting as possible but since it had, it should be uh, entertaining for you, I will switch to different element and it will be the ice crystal. Okay, so I will need this to to teal, <laughs> uh, white and black so I already have white and I already have black so I just need to add blue or teal to my palette and it will be all I need at the moment or maybe I will also use navy blue for uh, shadows I may need it because um, black is often too dark to make shadows on blue. So navy blue is just right for that. Okay. So let's do this. I tried to do uh, as much as possible with a brush but uh, it's really small piece so I will need to um, paint some of the shadows again because I covered it with an, with an airbrush so in some places you really can't see the separation between the ice shards I don't know if it's crystal or, or it's ice but I will try to paint it as ice and I really think it's um, somewhat like comic comic book style uh, really works well with Malifo miniatures it's supposed to be very dark and grim game but the style of the models 
uh, I don't know, I just feel like this nice bright colors and high contrast really work, works well on, on those miniatures. I never had a chance to play Malifo in my city. The Malifo scene is very small. Um, so yeah, we could we couldn't even if I would decide to buy an army I wouldn't have anyone to play. And I was already playing Warhammer and War Machine, so there is only so much games you can actually play. Although I know some people who play like every game on the market. Or maybe they just collect the miniatures and think about playing, but, but they are there. They just don't, can't help themselves to not buy new a Kickstarter or whatever there is in the newsfeed of a miniature world. It is cool, but I'm not that type of person. For now, I will just leave the tree branch. Alone. It will look way better when I paint the tree branch, but now, because now you can't really tell which is a tree and what is a, an ice shard, but that's the thing for another painting session. <laughs> okay, so so I I have probably enough shadows. It's hard because I'm very used to uh, keeping the miniatures very close to my face. Maybe I will try that. It, I hope it will focus. Okay, so I will highlight it a little bit just to see. to highlight something to get like the to see the overall pattern I'm often not sure what I will do uh, with the miniature uh, until I put the actual paint on in some spots so it's not like I have like sometimes I have like the grand plan paint a miniature but often 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 not and with painting shards it's really important to like focus all the light in one spot so yeah it's not that easy you really need to go there and try to accumulate as much of the color in one one particular place to make it look like a crystal of course after a brushing you have some idea how to do it or at least you should have 
but still it requires a decent amount of work and when you are um, deciding how to distribute the lighting on the model try to just pick one angle and focus on it mm, it's useful to think about the photo photo shoot you will do at the very end mm, because it's like impossible to make uh, the miniature look great from every angle so you just need to pick your angle and stick to it it, you, it will probably be like a few angles so it's the front the back and something in the middle but still uh, you shouldn't expect to make like this I mean, your miniature will look cool uh, when you do that, but you shouldn't expect it to look great from every single angle because it's uh, not possible. You need to focus your attention and your highlights on very certain pieces. I will add some edges. I'm not totally satisfied with it. When we are, when we are painting uh, like the whole armies, we really try to uh, do like the one model to think about all these issues I'm talking about and then just blow through like the hundred models we rarely paint hundred models but we usually paint like 20 at one time so you when we are when you are painting with the team you already need to know what you will be doing and how so i usually paint one model just to make the plan for the army. Sometimes, sometimes one, sometimes more. Because when you're painting with the team, there is uh, like no time to waste, and you really need to avoid any confusion. Like uh, there is. Painting whole armies very confusing just by its nature. There is so much details you need to uh, consider. And in this business, the workflow is everything. So you need to stay in the flow just to uh, keep the whole team uh, on the same page because it's really easy to lose the track of everything, the track of time, the track of uh, what we're supposed to do, what, uh, what we want to achieve, because when you are starting to paint, when you start to paint the whole element, it's very easy to um, just get lost to, in it so I could easily spend like a few hours painting like one cape it would look great but and it's uh, 
it's really um, when some when something is working for you and the painting can be very uh, rewarding but it's also a job so you need to uh, pace yourself just to not get lost in the process that's why I'm using I will show you in a minute I'm often using like a one hour time segments just to keep the track of time so after an hour I try to just collect myself and think how much I already painted and how much I still have to uh, do because it's really easy to well, it's not it would it would be a hobby it wouldn't be a waste of time to spend like an hour You can easily spend half a day painting uh, one element. And if you are painting for somewhat long time, you probably was there as well when you just uh, lost the track of time. And like woke up after three hours doing some detail so if you want to paint like a lot of models you may consider like using this some kind of stopwatch it's not mandatory but not like you can't paint without it but I'm I it's helpful for me okay so it's getting there but I need way more white to make it look like a crystal Since it has a very ge geometric shape, the straight lines are a very good idea for highlight highlights.
another there is whole uh, idea how you should paint shards but I won't won't describe it maybe I will do a like, tutorial about that because you really need to focus on um, the technique and idea uh, usually it's uh, the good source are like the painting guys for uh, illustrators not as it not necessarily need to be like the uh, miniature tutorial um, it can be uh, like Photoshop tutorial for uh, illustrators and people who paint with tablets um, the principles are the same so you can all learn a lot from different kind of tutorials they not need to be designed for miniatures as long as you're just trying to get the principle and the idea on how to paint something gems are Similar thing. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And again, I really like to add small dots to create some kind of texture and maybe uh, focus the highlights even more I will probably want I won't finish up these uh, shards in this video because I have only a few minutes left I will try to do my best. I hope it was somewhat helpful, somewhat entertaining and uh, I will try to put like one, I don't really want to promise anything because uh, I have so much stuff in my I have so much stuff to do and I always thinking I think a lot about doing the videos but uh, but I don't do uh, a lot of them because I have all the different instructions and responsibilities but if I could do like two of these videos a month, maybe three, it would be great. But uh, it will be very, very helpful if you could let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm do doing wrong. Maybe share this video with your friends. Do you think that somebody needs some motivation to paint his own miniatures? Yeah. The usual like and su subscribe and or not. I planned on doing like the live streams but nobody really watch watches them so maybe this form will be easier or more popular 
Anyway, I will try to do as much as possible, talk about some interesting stuff. Now I'm just rambling, maybe I, should, I will get some topics to talk about. I don't know, I don't really know how it should work. It would be perfect to get another person, really. But I have no idea how I could do that. Painting with somebody is great. If you have like the real painting companion, it's amazing to paint with another people. You wait and work way faster. You have the space to exchange and ideas. Um, and you can check with one another on how you are doing, maybe share some tips. So I hope it will be some, it will be a little bit like that for you. But yeah, I will, I will see how it will develop. When I start doing more of that, I will get more ideas. I don't know. Okay, so maybe I do a bit more. Okay, so I have this side pretty much done. I will probably fix up few more de few more details. I still need to do a lot more on the other side, and I have to paint the rest of the model. But yeah, for an hour it wasn't that bad. I got the face, the crystal shard, crystal shards, and I rambled about some stuff. So I feel productive. Okay. I hope you will use that video to motivate yourself, maybe paint along with me or whatever. If it do helps you let me know if you want something from me let me know if I can show something you are interested in let me know and I will see how it will develop in the future so yeah see you in a week or two bye Thanks for watching and remember to visit studiojollyroger.com for more information. Bye!